Hey y'all, it is Paula with Hillbilly Orchids. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back all my old subscribers and my new subscribers. Thank you for all the support and everything that y'all been giving me. And uh, I hope this isn't going to be too shaky of a video. The uh, You're on the sink. <laughs> so now I just released the video uh, today of the increasing the calcium and magnesium on my phalaenopsis orchids well now comes the important part of we must flush so my tap water is pretty good TDS it's not very high in dissolved solids so just to give you an idea it's about 78 parts per million so that's really pretty good right now that's you know sometimes it goes up in the hundreds but that's really good and I will definitely take that so um, the with the higher feedings and the higher TDS readings and the higher you know you'll, you'll you can stand a better salt buildup in your pots because your plants are only going to use so much if they don't use it then it's going to sit there and it's going to become salts well then those salts are going to absolutely kill your roots orchid roots do not like salt so you need to flush them and now flushing does several different things flushing dissolves that salt and moves it around again which makes it readily available again for your roots remember me telling you here's your roots well they can only take what they're right in line with and what's right beside them they can't take they can't reach out here and grab nutrients they have to take what's right here beside them so when you're flushing that around you're re-putting new nutrients right beside that root so it's going to be able to absorb it again so that is a plus for it also it can help adjust the pH within your pot sometimes the pH gets really high and sometimes that causes you know on the scale I've showed you which I could I could put one up on the screen you have a certain area like 5.8 that is just like a perfect down the line of where your your nutrients are absorbed at that certain pH so you know you need to kind of keep your orchids at that range and sometimes you can you know your your fertilizer mix like Jack's two-part system has great buffers and stabilizers in them to actually make the pH good but if the pH inside that pot is bad as well that affects your liquids going in so you know that also means is another good reason to flush but uh, I had a, a viewer watch and she's like or they were like um, I can't remember if it was a she he and I can't remember who it was now but I told them I said I'll, I'll do a flushing video because I'll show you because I'm gonna have to flush these guys I, after giving them you know 300 parts per million of the calcium magnesium and sea kelp mixture I waited about 48 hours and now I want to flush these pots really well so what I do is is and with phalaenopsis of course you want to watch the crown now a lot of people don't a lot of people can get away with getting water in that crown and they claim I mean even Rick L he was really strong on the fact that you know out in the wild they get rained on and they don't get crown rot which he's absolutely right he says that that is because they have the right amount of calcium and the right amount of nutrients they need in the wild that prevents them from getting crown raw. If they have good calcium and they are, you know, they're good firm leaves, then they will not get crown raw. But I still be very cautious with Phalaenopsis. I do not like to get water in their crown. And some Oncidiums, I'm really cautious about getting uh, water in the bracts so you know I try to watch that as well but basically what I do what I do <clears throat> because like I told you I have I keep a separate mask for every one of my plants 
That way I'm not sharing any kind of water. So what I do is I turn my water on and I wash this pot. So every time I flush, these pots get cleaned. So I know that that is clean. So, you know, all the algae is gone. Everything is gone out of here. Any kind of build up, anything like that. That way I know it's all out of there. Then I take my phalaenopsis and I hold it <clears throat> for several seconds over one certain area of pot. And I just let the water run through. And the water is tepid. It's, uh, it's kind of on the coolish side, but not, it, it's warm, but cool. You know what I mean? Like what you'd put a baby in, I guess. <laughs> to bath them in you just you don't want to you don't want it to be too cold you don't want it to be too hot so you just let it run through the pot and I sometimes take my hands and just rub the outside actually you guys ain't really even being able to see that are you so let me adjust the camera a little bit up to there we go <clears throat> You can see it down in when it's sitting in there, but you can't see it when I'm holding it up here and flushing it. So basically, I'm just holding it in the same spot, and I'm letting it run over the roots and everything. And like I said, I'll take my hand and rub the pot so that, like, and you can feel uh, almost like a film sometimes on your pot. So that helps wipe that film off. <laughs> Look at that. This is that Yafon, oh my god, that the second spike wasn't doing anything. And I put the uh, Kiki paste on it. <laughs> and now she's, now she's thinking she's going to make a bud or two. That, that spike sat dormant for so long. But this, like I said, you know, this is going to wash away any residual that was left. Because 300 parts per million is pretty high. And I recommend, you know, flushing anytime you feed that high usually people say when you feed really low when you feed like 100 to 150 parts per million they claim you don't have to flush i still like to flush because it just does good you know and if you can't take all your pots to the sink and your pots are outside things are outside and stuff you let the rain flush them or you know it's going to rain take them outside and let the rain flush look there i went ahead and got water in the crown <laughs> it's not easy sometimes, I'll tell you. It hit the end of this leaf and rolled right down into the crown. I'll wipe that out of there in a few minutes. Sometimes I will take my sprayer and spray so that it gets a little bit of pressure behind it to really push the stuff out. But I do that, <clears throat> like I said, for that, you know, for a few seconds like that. Not really, you, you've seen about how long. I do that for about each plant. So it definitely takes a while to get each plant done. Flushing is a, it's kind of a tedious job. A lot of people don't like doing it. I don't like doing it. But it's a necessary part of what you have to do to keep your phalaenopsis happy. Well, to keep all your plants happy, really. The best part, too, in, in flushing is with your, like, Cattleyas. This is the best time when you do this, when it's time to flush them. They're so awesome to flush. I don't mind them at all. They're not picky at all. Sorry, I got, I'm all in the camera way now since it's way up high. But of course, like I said, I've washed my, washed my tub that it's sitting in, pot that it's sitting in, then rinse them the same way. But the nice thing with them is, is you can really rinse the leaves. These guys are awesome with being able to clean them up really well. It knocks the dust off of them. Uh, you name it. It's, it's really good. 
really, really good. So, and then you just rinse them, rinse them, rinse them. But I do, I don't mind doing them because they're, you can be a little messier with them. With phalaenopsis, I just try to be really cautious as to how, how I throw the water around. But basically that's it and they should be good to go for another month. I usually, that's what I do is I flush mine once a month, most generally. The, the phalaenopsis have been a little bit more since all the, um, since the issue with the increase of the nutrients and supplements. So I definitely try to make sure that they get flushed more, but it's really, it's really beneficial for your plants to flush them. So try to take the time. Some people, you know, it takes me like a whole week. I'll take a certain shelf and I'll do nothing but flush that shelf. So, you know, it, 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 but it's a beneficial thing for your plants. So it's maintenance, it's upkeep, it's things that, you know, a grower don't really like to do, but it's things we got to do. And I also do my mounts the same way. The mounts are good too because you, you get to wash the dust off of them and things. Oh, let's see, let's do this one here. <clears throat> this little green fly. They're, they're relatively easy, but sometimes stuff builds up on the mounts as well. So it's good to flush them as well. It gets all the dust off of them. Gets all the build up off of them, gets any salts that are not dissolved, and flushes them around. Plus, it's a good, it's a good straight up drink of good clean water for your for your orchid. So, <clears throat> with that said, I do believe that covers everything. I appreciate y'all stopping by and hanging out with me. I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about flushing and, and why it's important. So, bye for now, y'all. Till we meet again.